Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Emily Bowie. I'm a mix engineer and content creator on things that'll help you get better in recording, mixing, mastering, and other related topics. Today, we're gonna be talking about Wave's new reverb plugin, the Magma Spring Reverb. Now, I know what you're thinking. Do we really need another reverb plugin? No, but do we need a new spring reverb plugin? Yes. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really helps things out here on the channel. It helps me to continue to put out these review videos for all of you to watch. And for doing so, I've got some free goodies for you. Go ahead and click the link in the description right there to download all of my recording and mixing mastering guides. There's a couple in there on Music Business 101, how to earn an income from your music, as well as some real live drum samples. My gift to you. So we don't really need another generic reverb plugin, but it's kind of nice to have another spring reverb option, especially one that's not gonna break the bank and pretty simple to use. The Magma Spring Reverb offers several different tone choices with some really cool modern features. And like I said, it's incredibly easy to use. But of course, it's got that classic reverb sound that we all know and love to hear. Now, for those of you who have seen my review videos before, know there's a few things that I like to look for when deciding if this is a plugin that I want to purchase to own for future use, such as, am I gonna make some money back on this plugin? Is it offering my clients a more premium sound? Am I gonna further my knowledge and experience using this plugin? Is it gonna give me a sound that I was previously looking for, but just couldn't quite get there with any other plugin? And ultimately, Am I gonna produce better sounding mixes? So let's go ahead and insert this reverb on a couple of things that I tend to like spring reverb on and see if we can get some answers to some of these questions. So first thing I'm gonna try it on is piano because that tends to be something that I might want a little bit of a spring reverb sound to. And I'll just take a listen here what it sounds like without. A little bit of a little bit of a country a little bit of a churchy sound to it this is just like a simple little song a little home recording that was done a few years back and so let's see if we can add some space here something cool sounding something a little bit unique sounding with this type of keyboard and so I've got a send on here and I'm actually I've actually got that panned to the opposite side of where the source keyboard is coming from. So let's see what that does. Let's see if it opens up, adds a little bit of space and something unique to our sound. So Motor City gets real, real churchy for me, real uh, spaced out. The way that we have this panned, it's obviously going to spread that out a little bit. But what's really cool about this is that little tingy sound that a spring reverb gets. And it doesn't sound too digital uh, with this plugin. I really, really like that. The California was probably my favorite sounding on that. Of course, we didn't get into the heavy, but I just felt like those would be a little too dark for what we're going for here. We'll try those out on some other things. I do have it in long so that I can spread it out as much as possible. Didn't tweak anything here. I, I really think these are self-explanatory and I know there's a ton of review videos on Waves plugins and probably especially this one and they'll go over every little 
thing that these knobs do, but I mean, they're self-explanatory. If you wanted to brighten up the effect or bring up some bass or pull it down, either one, you get it, you got it. 100% uh, mix because we're controlling that on the send here. I don't really care about trying out the, the feedback or the pre-delay on this one. I have a little bit of drive on there uh, just to kind of beef it up, just make it stand out a little bit. And I really like what it's doing. So that's definitely something that I'm going to incorporate on some keyboards, especially those mono kind of plug in. Um, I think this was just plug direct in from a keyboard. Uh, we just found like a sound that we liked and just, just recorded it straight to an audio track here. It's a very simple way to do things. If you've got some good uh, settings on your keyboard, I mean, might as well, right? We weren't planning on changing it with, with anything else, so we didn't do that with MIDI. So yeah, that's a really cool sound. Um, I, on this one, I don't get too much of that uh, whippy kind of sound that sometimes spring reverbs get, but let's go ahead and try it on some electric guitar. All right, so I've got the spring set up on a couple of different things here, but let's first start out with the guitar here. Now for this, I've just got the main guitar. This was a stereo pair um, recorded from one amp with two different mics. So I've got that going through an aux track here. And let's just send a little bit to the Magma Spring Reverb. One of the biggest things to note about this plugin is all of these different ones. There's seven different, I guess, tone models. And the 1950s, I believe on the website it says something about early rock and roll and Memphis blues. I'm not real sure about the Memphis blues, um, unless it's, I hear it on, a, on some rockabilly things, maybe like some, you know, old school sun records, but maybe, maybe they're just meaning that because the reverbs on those amps were spring reverbs. Now, there wasn't anything digital so maybe it's just like the tonality of those amps and the reverbs that were on those amps maybe what that was going for um and so they change in different things now california yeah we you know we're familiar with that sound and how that sound became popular with the spring reverbs i really like the classic too i don't know if the motor city is my favorite i don't really it's weird i don't really know if i associate many it says Motown I mean I don't know um my uh music history is kind of thinking that maybe it's just the emulations on certain amps that were used and they're taking this the reverbs off those amps but anyways that's something for you know maybe for us to research on our own but I just um uh, you know, they, they come up with these different names and I get the California, maybe I get the classic. And then these were just sort of maybe based on those time in, in recorded history, but enough chit chat and let's get into what the electric guitars sound like. So let's just go through all of them, right? Let's start with the fifties. I've got it on long just so that we can hear some things. I may go back and go through those as well. Maybe we've got a little bit of feedback, a little bit more drive, and I'll play around with the pre-delay. Um, I will say that initially I really didn't care too much for the sound that it was making, but let's see what it sounds like. But you know, you be the judge of that.
so there you go. Uh, sounds pretty cool. They all do, really. Um, <laughs> if you could hear what I was saying about the pre-delay, not the biggest fan of, of the sound. Of course, you know, maybe you can find something that, um, you know, in sound design that you think that's cool on. Go for it. Maybe it sounds good on, like, some synths or something like that. But this is a guitar. This guitar is, is a Telecaster, and a lot of you could probably figure that out. So there's got a little bit of a little bit of twangy, a little bit of picking going on. Um, but I didn't really like the twang. I like the classic and maybe a little bit of the California. You can hear that that little like um, that almost whipping sound with the uh, California setting there. It's classic spring reverb sound. So yeah, I think it sounds really cool. I think it really helps um, spread things out a little bit. So see what I'm talking about real quick here with how it kind of closes in and then, you know, a, a reverb doing its job, but also giving us like just such a cool sound. So here's without, and I'll switch back and forth. So you can do it that way on your kind of bus track here where you've got everything bussed together, grouped together, or do individual and then you can maybe go opposite like we did with the keyboard, you know, pan the effects opposite of how you have the main source pan. That might be something cool. You're creating movement, you're creating space, you're filling in the gaps, you're just uh, making things sound like, th like they've got some movement and some emotion to it. That's why you, you'd pick up something like a, a spring reverb. Now, drums is not something that I would usually put a spring reverb on, but some people do, and you can, and it sounds pretty cool if it works. So let's just see, I don't know, let's play around with it, see what it does. Maybe it'll add some some emotion and some depth to these drums that we've got going on here. Because these sound a little bit, um, just, just sort of very acoustic sounding for this recording. Just one thing maybe to point out, the Motor City almost sounds like a chamber a little bit. Uh, it still has the little, the of the, of the uh, springs, but um, yeah, there's something kind of cavey and chambery about that. Love the classic. Yeah, I think this dark space, there's 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 some uh, ele some effects elements in there that make me think maybe that's something for some some synth, some of those analog synth sounds. So, I mean, it's adding some, some space to it. It's adding some cool effects. Don't necessarily think that this would be the reverb that I would go to on this style of drum it's for this song. But, you know, not saying that you couldn't do it. Just saying that I probably wouldn't. But I'm loving it on the keys and the electric guitar so far. And then the last thing that I guess I'll try this on is some vocals because why not? I've reached for some spring reverb on vocals before, so, so I want to see how it sounds on these vocals. Through muddy water. And you're, I have already have a, a slap delay on that, so that's what you're hearing. Through muddy water, round high rolling pine. Oh, that's nice. Through thorny thickets, 
You were on my mind As I brought you flowers From the sweetest vine You know, it's funny, when you get down into the 50s here, it almost sounds like it, it doesn't go mono necessarily, but it, it sounds more mono. It just it sounds a little bit more narrow. Through muddy water. Which could be a really cool thing because I have definitely used mono reverbs on vocals. Uh, sometimes just the mono reverb, and then sometimes I'll have the mono reverb and then uh, another reverb on a separate send and to add a little bit more space, maybe in the, and then you, you might automate those to be a little bit more mono in the verses and then stereo and more spread out in the chorus. Through muddy water, round high rolling pine, through thorny thickets, you were on my mind. Don't hate that. As I brought you flowers from the sweetest vine. And all those hard-fought footsteps, just a waste of time. Oh, northern lady, all dressed up for flight. Looking out across a summer star-filled night And oh God, I wish you'd put up a better fight I ain't saying I was wrong I can't say I was right so yeah, that is definitely something that I would like to have in my toolkit as far as vocal reverbs go, for sure. So that and really guitars, keyboards, so probably my strings and vocals, which kind of go hand in hand, you know, especially in how you mix them. You mix vocals kind of similarly to how I like to mix string instruments. So yeah, I mean, I think I've answered all of my questions as far as, you know, is this something that I'm going to make money back on? Well, sure. Is it is it going to offer a more premium sound? Yeah, I think so. It's, it, it sounds like a premium plugin. And some of the other ones that I used to use um, aren't the cheapest. You know, you've got the UAD one. That's not cheap. So this is something that, you know, a lot more people are going to be able to use. And it does, in fact, sound better than the, you know, Pro Tools stock one, which is not bad, it just sounds a little bit more digital because you don't, I don't think there's as many tonal options on that. And so this is something that does offer that. So I think that it is a, a more premium option. I thought that it did en enhance the uh, sound. I, you know, gained some knowledge and experience by using it, especially uh, learning how, you know, each of those different eras sound. Um, you know, go, doing a little bit of research on that and kind of thinking it's it's maybe more so the reverb on the um, the era of whatever amps were being used and, and how the reverbs were sounding on those. So that's really cool, right? Always good to learn something. And it, did it sound better? Yeah, I mean, it definitely opened up some things. And, it, you know, it was a sound that I like to go with, but maybe, you know, it's not available sometimes, um, especially if there's, you know, a little bit more money involved in owning certain plugins. You know, one of the best things that I see about this plugin is the ability to easily switch between the different reverb models, which gives you a ton of versatility when it comes to tone. So a really cool modern feature on a classic reverb sound. So if you're in the market for a new spring reverb, I can highly recommend checking this one out. Now, before you go, if you did find this video informative, and enjoyable, then go ahead, hit that thumbs up. Maybe it helps with the algorithm, maybe it doesn't, I don't know, I'm not convinced, maybe you can change my mind. But more importantly, before you go, don't forget to hit that link so that you can get your free guides. 
All right, y'all. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.